Wait, where do guys find this block? This. Let's let's start at the beginning. What do you guys want to play in general? So I honestly have no idea what's going on. Like I heard about this game only from yesterday, I think. Yeah, that's fine. We made most of the decisions yesterday. When is the game time? What's the game? Um, depending upon who's what everyone's availability is, I figured we would start at ten AM, same time we do plane walkers and far realm fear. Uh, and play until uh, someone has to bail. I don't really have a cap on Saturday, but I know you, uh, you're you on the other side of the planet, so that's already fairly late for you. Yeah, I mean, today's start is pretty brutal. Um, I also have my own game that's usually on kind of the third or fourth Saturday of the month. Uh, like, for example, next is the 20th of August. Um... So that's a once in a month time. Well, we'll, ha we'll be doing this game every other Saturday from this Saturday forward. So you can just project it ahead and schedule your game on a weekend that we're not playing it. Like it is every other Saturday, and if you're only going once a month, then you can just do it on the Saturday we're not playing. Um, yeah, I think on the 20th of August, I already conflicted, unfortunately. Mm. I, going forward, I could schedule it to avoid it, I guess. Well, you figure out how you want to handle your end. If you can't make it to a session, then we'll just push you into the wall and go on uh, with it. That game, though, that he's talking about, the 20th, I'm also in. Oh, yeah, you okay. So we, we have to figure out what we're going to do about that. Um, if it's not possible to move your game, like, this game can only happen on th these Saturdays, so... If it's um, a conflict yeah, for I both can, of you, then we don't play. I can check because uh, we did the scheduling exercise there. And that's the one that uh, was only available in August, but uh, in September it should be easier. Because a whole bunch of people are traveling. That's the main difficulty. Yeah, like I said, if, if no one's available to play, then we don't play. Okay. Uh, yeah, I might try to play Bard if I can actually play this game. We'll see. Because the Bard looks really cool. John, before I put these stats in, your Shaman class is based all around uh, Charisma, right? Same as Horse? Yes. Okay. That was the primary thing that I got rid of in the Favored Soul when I made the Shaman is the stupidity of having two different prime requisites for your spell casting. It's probably the worst game design thing I've ever seen in D&D. You may accept the paladin class. Well, I made the paladin all charisma too. Okay, fair enough. Because <laughs> it had the same problem, only worse. Um, yes and no, because spellcasting as a paladin is like a secondary ability, and you don't really need a high wisdom to cast spells. Like, a 14 wisdom is decent enough to cast up to 14th level, or up to 4th level spells. And by the book, you never get higher than 4th level spells, so it's never yeah, an issue. Yeah, the, pro the, prob the problem is if you're a paladin, then any stat except int is important for you. Yeah. Like... Some classes have higher requirements than others. If you don't like the requirements for Paladin, don't play a Paladin. In 2nd edition, you needed a 17 Charisma to even qualify to be a Paladin, and there were four other requirements. They weren't particularly high, but they were all things you needed. I think you needed Strength and Con and Wisdom and Charisma. And all of them had to be double digits. Hmm. Which, when you're rolling just 3d6, it's hard to achieve. <laughs> so, Ernest wants to play a bard. Um, you're playing a shaman, Jesse. Yep. 
stuff did you decide what you want to do? I was planning on working with whatever you guys needed, um, is what, whatever worked well. I was in my, I would, I would play fighter or cleric, um, or druid were the three that I was, I, I would prefer. So my plan, just so if you guys want to build off, is to be a shaman sorcerer and going into a mythic third. So I'll be arcane and divine. But crappy at both. Yes, not not full at both, but crap, but like, you know, jack of all trades, master and none. Yeah, um, but he's taking the cheesiest race in existence, so he can at least get one free level of sorcerer from that. Joe's gonna play a swashbuckler. He seems really gung ho on it, um, so that's a pretty easy fit for uh, martial class. Swashbuckler is a frontline fighter. Um, a bard is kind of a medium position. If we have uh, another fighter or a paladin or even a ranger in there, that could uh, definitely shore up the front line. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be a frontliner. I'm going to be a diplomancer. What is a diplomancer? It's a bard that goes really heavy on diplomacy to the point that it can make diplomacy Don't checks too much. Oh. Like, in combat and still manage to pull them off. John, your shaman saves are ridiculous. Why? Perfect, perfect scores, like 2-2-2 two, two, two at 1, and it goes up. Like, it's monk, it's monk freaking saves. Yeah. Strong as fuck, I love it. That might actually be from the favorite soul. It might just be one of the special abilities it had. Ah, uh, that's right. You didn't take it from the favorite soul. Yeah, I quite literally went through and took all the abilities of the favorite soul and scaled them by level so that you could uh, have abilities at lower levels and not have to wait till 15th level to get, like, wings or whatever. Not that it really matters for you if you're only going to 5th level. Yeah, I mean, I plan on going down the races of dragon feats and getting and just getting wings for that way. Like taking the dragon right and then taking the dragon wings and then in the improved dragon wings. Yep. We'll discuss the dragon rot uh, later. Don't worry too much about that. Okay. So, what's the story of the game? Well, the. Uh... The story will unfold in game. Uh, I posted that that little blurb that I wrote for the last game, but it doesn't have any bearing on the opening of the game. Um, you guys are just going to be a bunch of uh, old time friends, and you meet up in town uh, for some arbitrary reason, and then shit starts happening. Uh, the opening adventure is uh, mostly non-combat. It's mostly errands and uh, negotiation. So it's uh, going to be a kind of a dumbed-down combat uh, versus other games. But there will be lots of combat in the game in general. I don't really want to give you guys too much information about the main plot because it's just a spoiler of the whole uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. So, Josh, what's uh, your plan? So, what class do you, would I would be best for me to take? Um. Some kind of martial class would be good. I th I was thinking uh, a paladin of freedom, like uh, an exalted cat, a good uh, paladin. If that interests you. Mr. Roboto. Paladin, I try. I don't think I've done it before. Yeah, it's just a spin on the traditional paladin being chaotic instead of lawful. Okay. 
John, what are do you have the age categories for kobolds? Are they different in your game? About the same as book uh, kobolds, I think go at one tenth of the age rate of dragons. Okay. I think it's in the races of stone, or sorry, races of the dragon. Everybody's fine with me playing a kobold, right? Yep. Cool. Do you have a special paladin doc, or is it the SRD? I do have a special paladin document. Hang on, I'll grab it for you. I'm just I'll, I'm scrolling through. I just didn't, when I control F, it didn't pop up. Oh, kobolds can live long if they're not suicidal bombers. Reach adulthood at six, and but can live up to one hundred and twenty, but rarely do so. That's the base uh, paladin doc. I need to go through and rework it. I haven't looked at it in a couple of years, but uh, I'm going to do like a master paladin document, and then just make the powers. Um, uh, alignment based but it'll give you a gist of what uh, your abilities are do you make any decisions Josh well I was trying to find out <clears throat> a little more like I didn't want to go chaotic evil when we have a lawful good paladin in the party or something. He is playing a chaotic paladin. I think the I think we're all going to be some sort of chaotic chaotic uh, alignment here. John has paladins of every alignment in his game, so they don't necessarily have to be lawful. I was just getting to the point. I wanted to see what everyone was kind of doing as far as alignment and beliefs. That way we're not old friends that just want to murder each other. No, that makes sense. I think if I've read Mind Curve, my god correctly, I'm playing a chaotic uh, one sec. Chaotic neutral follower of uh, pretty much the god of invention. Pretty much just invention and pleasure is what I'm about. John, did you uh, link? Did you already send me their uh, post the uh, Assetarian doc? I think so. Yeah, I'll scroll back. Yes, you did. The Wandering Worm. Yeah. When you were asking about Dragon Gods, I posted it in Discord. So that's kind of where I'm going towards there, Slevin. So we have a chaotic neutral uh, kobold, a uh, chaotic good paladin. Um, what kind of bard are you going to be, Cat? Uh, fuck knows, I'm still trying to decide. I'll probably be chaotic, but I don't know about alignment uh, on the good evil axis scale yet. Okay. Probably good though, because words of creation. Words of creation as a bard are out of control. Yeah, exactly. So probably caught it good. Okay. Okay. I don't know what alignment uh, Joe's going to be, but he'll probably go with the crowd. Um, if everyone's chaotic good, he'll probably be chaotic good. I don't think he said anything specific um, outside of wanting to play a, a swashbuckler because he'd never done that. And that he was going to be human, presumably because he's going to want the feats. Yeah, that's what I he was messaging me, and he said he that's exactly what he messaged me is he's just go with the crowd, so he'll he'll be make around us. Yeah, Joe's pretty easy going when it comes to that kind of stuff. Your alignment doesn't really matter when you're a murder hobo. <laughs> It, you just have to justify your murders in a different way, that's all. Uh, 
啊。Did you still want to go with the beguiler? Or did you want to go in a different direction? I might go different. Uh, with a bard who's already going to be a diplo, that might uh, step on your toes. That's kind of what I was thinking. That's the problem of, with waiting till the end to declare your uh, choice. No, right? I knew. I, I have backup plans. Uh, cause my initial plan was to go something knowledge devotion centered. Yeah, but that'd be awesome as a beguiler with, uh, intelligence as your prime ability. Yeah, if you want, I can go something different with Bard. I can also no, no, an go Bard. You're good. A bard, a bard is an awesome thing to have in a five-player party because it, it's a really nice, balanced character that helps with everything. It's surprising how often when I start a game with five players, someone immediately latches on to the idea of being a bard. You don't want to be a bard in a three-player party because then you just get your shit pushed in. Kenny played a bard in a two-player party, and uh, it was a shit show. Thank God I'm not playing a melee-based uh, kobold, because minus four strength kind of sucks. I mean, if, if, if you're in a lonely bard party, you can always go summon a bard. Oh, kobolds get minus two con. That's uh, quite damaging. Uh, take the desert variant. They take minus two wisdom instead of con. Um, how many of your points do you plan to put into knowledges? Uh, well, a bard, bard is full knowledge, so it's kind of silly not to take all of them. Oh, lack of lack of skill points is the same reason I won't take it with Beguiler. Not enough skill points. Yeah, actually, as a bard, I get bardic knowledge, so I don't need all knowledges. Uh, like, knowledge history as a bard, for example, is pretty useless except the minimal bonus to bardic knowledge because you usually can just roll bardic knowledge on this ship well the very first thing you should do before you make broad sweeping statements about what bards can do is read the document because the way i do bardic knowledge is you roll a knowledge check and if you have at least one rank in that you can roll a bardic knowledge as well and take the higher Ah. So, if you have at least one rank in every knowledge, you can always roll a check, and you can add your level to the one that is your bardic knowledge check. Hmm. So basically, I just need one rank in every uh, in every knowledge skill. Yes, which is why I said you're probably going to have ranks in all the knowledges, and the ones that become particularly valuable, you're going to want to max. Um, so... Obviously, you can have more than one knowledge-based character in the party, and it's good to be able to make multiple checks for when you do fail, because even when you roll 2d20, you can roll shit. Yeah, also important thing to note is, like, for me, this is a seventh campaign, and so it is quite difficult to commit to it. I'll need to think like whether I can regularly join, but even if I do join, like if there is someone else who's waiting for a seat, it might be more fair to prioritize them. If not, there might be times that I cannot attend just because I'll have too much D&D that week and I'll have to also do other shit. Like no, that's more. fair. Um, think about what your plan is and how much time you're going to have and make a decision based on that. Um, I don't have a specific person in mind as a fifth player, but uh, if you want to bow out, that's totally fine. I can find someone else. Or we can just run with four players for the meantime. Yeah, I'll think about this. Um, like, even if I decide to join, it will be hard for me to commit as a regular, as mentioned, just because, again, it might get unpredictable at that point. 
uh, but I don't mind if I'm like NPC'd or skipped if I cannot attend. Yeah, I'm fine with pushing in the wall when you're not free, but uh, like I said, figure out what you want to do and go from there. Yeah. Um, if you're not going to be able to regularly make it, it's probably not going to be fun to show up every other session. Yeah. So it really comes down to what your priorities are. Uh, I'm fine with it either way. Um, like I said, I asked you to join because I thought you were uh, eager to play more D&D, but if you're overloaded, then uh, it's totally fine to step back. Yeah, I, I'm eager to play more. The reason I preferred with the existing campaigns was then I have like a minimal amount of presence in the campaign. But if there is a new campaign, I might reach the point at which there are campaigns that I pay, play like once every two months, and then I can't really like get into them properly. Uh, that's my fear. But I'll I'll think about this. I'll see if I can actually commit seriously. Okay, because um, that might affect what uh, Josh wants to play. If you're not going to be there or not regularly going to be there as the bard, um, he might still want to go with his beguiler. Honestly, he should probably go with the beguiler and not worry about me being a bard because I'm a diplomacy-based bard and like he can be a knowledge-based character and still do, still do really well. Yeah, but I think he also wanted to be a diplomacy-based character. Oh, he wanted to be diplomacy. Mm. Maybe I should just go Artificer then and give him the Beguiler. Yeah, the problem is like... I don't want to go Artificer because everyone else chose like a tier 3 character and Artificers are way too strong. Uh, yeah, it will be unbalanced. But this more balanced. I don't know. I if, if if you like Artificer, I mean, I, I don't care about a balanced party as long as like we're not like trying to step on each other's toes all the time. Plus, I don't think I've ever seen anybody play an Artificer before. Yeah, it's basically a class that can do anything that a Tier 1 class can do only better. Like, take a Wizard plus a Cleric plus a Druid, combine them into one and give them extra two levels, that's basically an Artificer. Yeah, except that most of their abilities require them to be prepped in advance. That's their only weakness, yes. But they have access to every kind of spell, um, uh, how's it called? Spell pool in the game, which is the really broken shit. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Go with the Beguiler. I'll think of a class that doesn't conflict with you. It will be more fair. Okay, I moved you guys over to the uh, area map. Um, this is the uh, country of Nebene. Um, it is mostly an agricultural country. Um, doesn't have a great deal of industrial capacity. It has a small mining sector and whatnot, but most of it is just farms and uh, ranches and whatnot. You guys are going to be from V1, which is down in the southeast. That is uh, Dens. It is the uh, commercial hub of this area. Uh, mostly just because it's at the start of the river. And uh, that from that point uh, to the east, the river is navigable. Uh, it drops out of the mountains kind of suddenly and uh, flows right through the capital and on into the Elven Forest in the west. More for background than anything, if you wanted to be someone who uh, 
had a like career as a uh, ferryman or something like that or being involved in the agricultural trade it is also a frontier area as the hills and the mountains are fairly wild and to the south are the minotaur plains this area doesn't have much uh, minotaur activity but they have been known to range all the way up to dens in the past so you said we're at what v1 v1 The real thing. Do I go Dragon Domain or Luck Domain? I mean, if you were Dragon. I guess it would make more sense to go Dragon Domain if I'm a Cobalt Dragon Club. It definitely makes more sense thematically to go with um, the Dragon Domain for a Cobalt because that would be important to Cobalts, but. The luck domain is insane. Luck domain is insane, but I also kind of want to go with the dragon domain. Match my heritage. Yep, that's fine. Plus, you know, getting bluff and intimidate as clerks, uh, as class skills are kind of nice. I think you get at least bluff as a sorcerer, so that's not really a huge bonus. I don't know about intimidate. I, uh, yeah, you get it as a sorcerer too, but I'm not taking sorcerer until way later. That's fair. I figured party needs to start out, unless all of a sudden, what's his face is uh someone else is going to divine caster, but probably gonna go to three shaman, then go three three uh, sorcerer, and then go two and two, and then go ten. Whatever floats your boat. So my original idea was to play an Eldritch Disciple. So if he wants to play a bard, that's fine. Well, he's basically said that he isn't sure he can commit to the game. So make your character decision yeah. outside of what he's doing and he'll play around you. Exactly. Is Bluff a charisma based skill? Yes. What's an Eldritch Disciple? I've never heard of that. Cleric, Warlock, Hybrid. Oh, that's neat. So it basically, much like Mystic Thurge, it's the cleric warlock version of Mystic Thurge. Oh, okay. So you got to take cleric levels and warlock so levels and work up to it. Yeah. Except I would start taking it earlier than he's planning to take his. Well, don't listen to anything Jesse says because Jesse doesn't make any sense. Hey, going 5-5 five five is the one you told me to do. It made more sense, too. No, I said going five and five long term is what you should be aiming for. But the quicker you get into the Mystic Thurge, the quicker oh, you start that. getting uh, double spell levels. That's fair. Then I'll probably just do it as early as possible at level at three and three then. But three and three already means you're going to be seventh level before you start the class. Yeah, which is fine. Like I'm going to have to do some sacrifices somewhere. I mean, I think with Eldritch Disciple, I think the earliest you can take that is level 6 anyway. Yeah, there's a couple of the prestige classes that require just one level in the other class, and some of them require multiple. Yeah, I think it's it's the skill points on that are required to be in Eldritch Disciple that keeps you from being able to do it before 6th. You have something oh. you need nine skill points in? 
Do I get three domains or just two as a shaman? It doesn't say on the dock here. You get one. Oh, you only get one as a shaman. Okay, so it's not like clerics where you get three. No, it's like druid where you get one. Okay, I guess I'm going with the travel domain over the dragon domain. I have a question. If we take a race that has LE, is that, L -A, is that possible with start of level 1? And if yes, how it works? Sorry, taking something that has what? A level adjustment. Uh, you mean like a race or a, a class? A um, you can technically take a plus one level adjustment. It just means you have to take an NPC class at first level. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to be a sorcerer, you could take a level as an adept, which just means you don't get the uh, the bonus feats and whatnot. Um, the problem is that the race in question is... Uh, what is this bit? Ah, it's only one. Yeah, because it has ratio hit us, but you said it also applies with the... Uh, um, what are you considering? Uh, three green monk. A three green monk? Yep. Why would you choose to play a monk in a chaotic party? Oh, right. That's a good point. I forgot about that. Okay, I, never mind that. A three crane. Oh, you're going to be a giant insect insectoid, aren't you? Yeah, the, the beauty with a three crane monk is you get like a bazillion attacks. Because they have like, what, six arms? Uh, it has four arms and they're natural weapons. So you can flurry with like your legs and then uh, attack with your arms. And we, I think they might have a bite as well. Check this. So it's basically just a, a attack spewing machine. Also, they jump really high. They have plus thirty ratio jump. Well, they are basically grasshoppers. Yeah. But for the sake of having a cohesive party that uh, has a common start, let's try to come up with something a little more in line with the theme. Yeah. See, at least I think Cobalt still has some, like, aspects that would fit in. Yeah, and you're going to be a lot younger than the party, so you can be a recent addition to the group. Okay. Yeah, I was. I have my I have my age set at thirty five for Cobalt, which is young adults. Or no, the adulthood starts at six. I can drop that to like nineteen. Yeah, I haven't looked at the Cobalt Age, but I know it goes up very rapidly. Yeah, it goes for they they're adults by six. I was reading, and but they can grow to they can age to about one hundred and twenty. If, but they said they're they, even the book said their lifespan isn't long because Cobalts are greedy, greedy, and like to die. Well, they don't like to die, but they often die. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Lifespans don't generally come into play with regards to D and D because, in game time, the game rarely lasts more than a year or two before either it falls apart or uh, you guys achieve your objective and everybody is high enough level that their age doesn't matter. Don, would you allow me to start out reusing my starting out gold to start out with the draconic rite of passage done? What's that? Uh, upon completing this ritual, Cobalt chooses a first level sorcerer spell. He now casts a spell once per day as a spell like ability. Yeah, Waking the Dragon. What's the cost of that? Um, I 100 gold piece gem, and I just have to go on a pilgrimage and whatnot. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that, but uh, you, you don't have that lose much. one HP permanently. I lose one HP permanently. The problem with that is you don't have 100 gold pieces at first level. Oh, how much, I, how much is starting gold? For a wizard, not a hundred gold pieces. I think it's like forty for, at max. For a okay, that's fair. Or a sorcerer just, or whatever. I was just seeing if I was trying to figure out a way to get it, so if I don't have to take nine days of in-game time plus another twenty-four hours to do it. Why would you take nine days? Cobaldon must for 
the time time a couple who undergoes this right must first endure nine days of fasting immediately thereafter a couple must succeed a dc 10 concentration check enter a deep trance that lasts for 24 hours yeah we can work that yeah, in the yeah. game that's not the end of the world yeah you don't you don't need to like there is no problem in doing it time again you just get to be like fatigued or exhausted or something from fasting yeah it's just more of the fact that i just didn't want to take in game time to do it like if we i guess if we took like a break after yeah adventure. don't worry about the mechanics of when you can do it like if you want to do it we'll figure it out that's not a problem okay And if you fast in the summer when it's warm, it's actually not. I don't think it has any penalties. Okay. Kobolds can go two or three days without food without even hesitation. I think that's why it's nine days. Is that's how long it has to be to, before they have any kind of penalty? Now the issue is to find a decent brass kobold token. Because all the kobolds are red, that I find on Google. Uh, Google Dragon Rot Brass. Oh, shit. Okay. Cobalt's are evil looking motherfuckers. Definitely gonna. Uh, you take light sensitivity <laughs> to play, right? Yep. Okay, well, a hood would prevent that, right? If I always just, like, had a hood up or some shit? Uh, no, you need specialized goggles. I think uh, kobolds normally have them. Okay. I have a hood up regardless, because I don't think kobolds are too... I, I told you, just look at the Desert Guardian. I think the Desert Guardian doesn't have that. It has something else instead. Yeah, I'd looked at that, but the brass... If I'm a brass heritage kobold, it, brass dragons aren't known for being desert trekkers. Okay. Maybe you should read a brass dragon. Are they desert? I've like read it. Like, fucking first line of the description is they're they're desert creatures. They love the oh. sand and the heat. And uh, Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'll do that then and just get rid of that. Negative. We'll figure out your mechanics later. That's not really a big deal. If I can get rid of the late sensitivity and uh, the minus two con, yeah, fine with. That. Yeah, it, w it would be uh, terrible if you uh, had a will save penalty instead of a constitution penalty. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. So I got the base going already. Yeah. The simple fact is your lowest score is a 14, so whatever you take the penalty in, you just put a bigger number in that uh, that ability to cover for it. Yeah, I had to put at least a minimal of 15 in my strength, though, because of my minus 5 for my race and age together. Actually, no, young. Uh, if I'm just a young adult, I don't get any of the age penalties, right? I just get the positives for Wisdom and Charisma. So no... young, young adult has no penalties or bonuses. Okay. Again, we'll worry about the specifics of the mechanics of your character outside of the uh, session zero. We're just here to figure out what we want to play and how we're going to go about it. Well, on that note, I know you asked me if I would be willing to take on a heavy RP position in this campaign and yeah. as much as I'd, I'd love to say yes and i do want to uh i don't know if i'm the best to be the focus because uh with the kid on the way i don't know what my time frame to play is going to be like around when it comes to the, the first couple of months of the kid's life uh when is your baby due november 2nd yeah, we got some time before then, and we can just take a break. If you're busy, we just won't play. Like okay. whether we're, whether sure we're playing we're this game or the that. other game, uh, we still won't play because you're not available. Yeah, I'm good. It's a game. It's not our our life. So if it works out that people have things they need to do and they can't make it, then we skip that week. 
And if you need to take a couple of months off while you're dealing with a new baby, I have five kids of my own. I know exactly what that's all about. Okay, do we have any other... I was a family, I was almost a family. I don't know how hard that can be. Sorry, what was that? I said, that's crazy, family. Yeah, yeah, five of them. Well, I only Same have... Family of five, I know how hectic five kids can be. Yeah, I had two with my first wife, and then a long gap before I had the next three. So, uh, my daughter was born in 91, and then my son in 95, and then next one was 20 years later, like... 2014 oh, okay. so there's a big gap between them yeah it's weird to think he has a kid older than me he's got a kid older than me as well are you a wee pup too i think we might be the same age i think we've talked about this before i assumed that you were newly married and uh starting out in life i just didn't uh know if that was like you were 30 something or if you were freshly uh into the world you say 27 yeah yeah it's in around jesse yeah I'm t i just turned 26 34 yeah you're all wee pups should i uh sorry side note should <laughs> how I old are you uh i'm 51 and my daughter just We'll turn 31 in uh, September. Cool. That's one of the funny things that I frequently hear online and Twitter and whatnot about playing D&D &D and things like racism and ageism and whatnot. And I was like, I don't know anything really about most of my players when I start playing with them. Like, I have no, I, I don't know anything about Ernest uh, other than he lives in Europe. He could be anything. Sorry, well, yeah, it, basically the prerequisite <laughs> is you're fun to play D&D &D with and you show up. Like, other than that, I don't really care. Yeah, I, I've never ran into any of that either. I've heard there's the roll 20 has some issues with it, but I'm like, well, I've never heard it. I think I have actively asked Joe about his ethnicity, and he just doesn't respond. Like, I always just assumed he was a white guy and uh, some nerdy uh, scientist guy who plays D&D, &D, but for all I know, he's Asian. Like, I yeah, don't know anything about it. I don't know why. He just gives me off Asian vibes. I never got an Asian vibe from him. I know that his wife is Asian because that's come up in the past. But uh, yeah, I, like I said, I don't really care. I was just curious. Uh, we were discussing it one day um, and I asked him and he just dodged the question completely. I was like, okay, well, well, it's not required to play in the game. Well, you can probably tell my ethnicity by the accent, so that's a bit easier. Sorry, what was that? You can probably tell my ethnicity by the accent, so that's probably easier. Well, you have a European accent that's kind of thick, but I can't place where you were. I think you actually told me where you were from, aren't you? Like from Czechoslovakia Russian. or something? Oh, yeah, you're Russian. Russian. Is that other guy who's like from Croatia? <laughs> the fake country. Oh, yeah, Ryan gave him such a hard time. The what? <laughs> Oh, we had this guy, I, I think he's still in the Discord uh, channel, but he was from Croa Croatia, and when he introduced himself, he told everyone that, and Ryan immediately said that's not a real country, and then it was a running joke in the game that he was from a fake country. <laughs> it is a real place, like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, we, we, we know, it was just a it's running a joke. joke. <laughs> Is there it, part of this, like, American humor who think that well, like, Madagascar is next to China or something? I, I don't know. Yeah. I never really asked Ryan what the context of the joke was, but I always got the impression that it was kind of a hick joke. Like, because he doesn't know, like, he's dumb. He's a dumb hick who doesn't know where that is. He assumes it's not a real place. So uh. I guess it is kind of an American <laughs> culture thing where you play dumb about something so that you can... Uh, make fun of other people when you're actually making fun of yourself 
We make fun of, uh, in the, when I was in the Marines, we would, uh, we would jokingly say Wyoming doesn't exist. <laughs> That's fair. I've never met somebody from Wyoming. I actually did meet somebody from there right as, right, right as I was about to get out. We had a new, um, a new boot show up who was from Wyoming. We still told him it didn't exist. He just didn't want to admit he's from California. That's probably it. And no one's going to question you being from Wyoming. It doesn't exist. It's like <laughs> we're in Wyoming, and they can say whatever they want because nobody knows the town in what, what the towns in Wyoming are called. I mean, all those Balkan countries are all oh, fake in, in a way. <laughs> If we want to go that route, all countries are made up, just like all words are made up. The concept of anything is made up, if, if we're going to go that far. If you have enough fist of people that want their own country, you get a new country. That's basically how it works. Isn't there like a, isn't there like a subset of people in the States who are claiming to run their own country? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called no. Texas. <laughs> fair, I'd say. It's fair to say. But no, there was a couple where people did that, like in like cities where they'd be like, "This block is our own country now." Micro nations, like two weeks, and then it, and then right? it's gone. Micro nations, right? Yeah, I think one of the big ones was in Seattle. They had that Shaz or Chop or whatever it was called that lasted a couple of weeks, and then la- and then they left. Did they realize that it sucked? No, I think there was this like a real life joke when a bunch of the like really rich dudes decided to make their own nation uh, somewhere in the Pacific, I think, uh, and they created a new island and declared the nation. But then like some people from Papua New Guinea came came in on boats and just took it away from them. <laughs> There's there was one in the state made in 2005 called the Dominion of British West Florida. <laughs> A micronation intending to revive the former British colony of the same name. That's hilarious. Only in fucking Florida. Only in fucking Florida. Well, people think that being an independent nation will give you some kind of power, but most of the power... Yeah, most of the power is derived from your tax base. So if you don't have a tax base... You don't have a military, you don't have roads, you don't have anything. Like that's why like the Chaz thing collapsed is because they cut it off, that ended all the economic activity and very soon there was no food, water, sewage, anything. Everything just got turned off because no one was running it. Yeah. That's true. If the water pipes in your area break and you don't have anyone on staff to fix them, Whoever's in charge of the water just turns that line off so that it's not spraying all over the place until you fix it. Oh, um, John, did you see my message? Do I just use the cleric starting gold for shaman, the 5d4 times 10? Uh, there's not starting gold on the shaman dog? No. That's weird. Clerks start out with a lot more gold than every other class. Holy. Well, same as Bard and Fighter. Druids get shafted 2d4 times 10. Druids get shafted. Yeah. You may as well take a vow of poverty for the first two levels. So, same with Barbarians. 2d4 times 10. Monks only get 5d4, not times anything. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, shaman's on par with the druid for it. Oh, okay, so you want me to... Okay, that's rough. Well, you don't really wear armor. You don't really have weapons. Like, you... Yeah, that's uh, fair. That's, what it, that's the problem with the druid. Or with, with the druid, is that you don't need anything. Same with the monk. You don't have any equipment. You're just a guy in a thong who punches stuff. Sixty G, not a bad start. Yeah, all you really need to do is buy a 
cheap melee weapon and a cheap uh, missile missile weapon, and then figure out your shit from there. If only I could use my god's weapon. It's a scimitar. Uh, yeah, you need martial for scimitar, so... Yep. Like, I am using a staff. It's a simple staff. Isn't their favorite soul proficient with the god's weapon or something like this? Uh, I'm not playing a favorite soul. I'm playing a shaman john's... Yeah, but uh, if it was built after that or something. I haven't looked at the doc. Uh, favorite soul technically is uh does get their pr proficient with their deity's favorite weapon, even though clerks aren't, which is really weird. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like favorite soul thingy. <laughs> and also change it so if you're running the war do or if you have the war domain, you get all martial weapons. So I think it kind of it balances it out. Yeah, most of the uh, clerics that have a martial weapon as their uh, chosen weapon are war clerics and or war gods and they give out the war domain in which case you get it and not like as a shaman I'm going to be up in the front melee fighting anyways with a 10 strength okay does anyone have any uh, other uh, questions before I jump off um well, at some point, I would just like to know what that other guy who wanted to be Beguiler decided. Uh, so, in case I can't play, I can see if I'm a bug or something else. Um, um, John, when do you have time to go over like the Dragon Rock thing and all that? Um, Sometime this week, we can go over it. Okay. Yeah, I'll just leave my feet empty then, because I want to grab the Dragon Rock and look at something else for... Probably, probably take the Dragon Wings. I have to take it at first level. Yep, that's fine. Okay. I'm assuming it just turns my subtype into a <clears throat> from humanoid into a dragon. Yeah, like I said, we can go over the details of it. I just wanted to get everybody together and get everybody on the same page so that we can, when we're ready to play, we don't spend the first hour of the session trying to figure out how we know each other and what classes, how our classes interact and make sure there's no conflicts in alignment and that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, I figured you guys were going to be old time friends who had gone your separate ways and have recently come back together. You kind of meet up at, I think it's the Jolly Jug in uh, Dens, just for like a, a reunion. And that's when the game will launch. So I wanted to have a little bit of context for everyone in that regard. Um, whether you've gone off to the capital to study magic or apprentice somewhere or whatever everybody has finished their first level training and come back home or what to what is their adopted home in your case um jesse as a kobold you probably uh came here as like an outcast and were taken in by the community yeah because if i'm being a chaotic neutral kobold following a not kobold god yeah i feel like i'd get outcast and shunned by my people especially with my more brassy skin tone well it might even be something a little less related to that and more related to you being dragon rot if you are a brass dragon rot you might have been uh, a cobalt that is being delivered um, if you read the section in the day in the life of a cobalt in the races of the dragon and I would read that entire cobalt section end to end um, there's a, a story about a female who's escorting a dragon rot uh, egg I believe it is to another location because it fits with a different tribe than hers so if you were in a um, lawful evil environment where it's green kobolds and by fluke of genetic manipulation you end up as a chaotic good kobold in that group they wouldn't just execute you they would send you off to go live with different kobolds and along the way you get lost or okay. shunted somewhere else like we can come up with specific details for how yeah. you ended up in dens like you could have ended up in dens just because whatever happened a group a group of guards or whatever 
came across these kobolds cutting through the countryside and attacked them and uh, in the process found this egg and one of them was like oh cool a dragon egg and kept it okay so in cobalt society dragon rots are almost highly praised type thing yeah it, if you were a dragon rot uh kobold that would be obvious from the time your egg is laid because your egg, egg is i believe it's laced with the color of the dragon that you are rot from so uh they they identify that early and uh, they are revered. They're usually held up as being leaders. So if you had been in a uh, warren that suited your dragon type, you would have basically been trained from birth to be the new leader oh, when okay. you came of age. Okay. That would make sense also for why my, uh, why my uh, what is it, sorcerer, um, my sorcerer bloodline will uh, come into play too. Yeah, that makes sense too. So there could be a whole bunch of uh, interlaced things that lead to all of your uh, uh, mechanical things that are story-based. And like I said, we can go through all of those types of details as we progress or just during the week. We got two weeks before we'll launch. So uh, I got to whip everything together and get the game set up by then. But I just wanted to uh, get everybody on the same page. Any questions, Levin? Uh, no, I'm just chatting here. Uh, I'll come up with what I want to do. I mainly want to find out which way our group was going. Are we going, like, are we going lawful good, evil? Because when I read that description that they sent out, I was like, well, that could be completely polarizing for a group if we don't come up with a general idea of what our party thinks. Yeah, that was one of the reasons I wanted to do this. I don't normally do a session zero uh, ever, like unless it's specific. And I think the last session zero I did was for the last time I ran the chaos campaign. So I think we're decided we're all chaotic. Right? Yeah, it sounds like everyone's going to be uh, on the chaotic side, whether you're chaotic specifically or just uh, neutral or whatever good and chaotic is the general um, situation we're in mm -hmm. oh look Joe's on I actually might look into uh, craft skills and profession skills in this on this character for once I don't like they come too much into play yeah, there can be some uh, good uses for craft, depending upon what you're interested in. Well, I get tra craft track making as a kobold, and I'm looking at craft uh, craft alchemy. Yeah, alchemy and uh, traps are good ones for kobolds. What's up, Joe? Yeah, and I had a moment, and I actually stopped by and say hi, see what's going on. We are just finalizing what we're going to do and about to call it. But uh, I'm sure everyone's going to post stuff in uh, the chat in Discord, so you'll be able to see all of the uh, details. It looks like we're going to go chaotic good or chaotic bent. So uh, I don't know if you'd built your Can character you around that. No, I don't have a computer. So tomorrow night or Monday, I'll hopefully be able to sit down and finalize my character. Okay. Anything else before I go? I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Okay, I'll catch you guys later then. Later. Cool. later. Cheers to you. Bye.